today we're dyeing another small bunny with Kool-Aid. I want to have a very pale purple one. This time I have all the pieces cut out. So our first step is going to be to put all of the pieces here into our warm water in the dish pan. I've got the pieces in the warm water in the dish pan and I'm going to squeeze each of the pieces to help them absorb that warm water. Now in my microwave safe casserole dish, I've got warm water and now I'm going to pour in my grape Kool-Aid and stir it up. And take your distilled white vinegar and because we only have a little bit of water in here, I'm going to put two or three tablespoons of vinegar in there. And this is to help set the dye, the Kool-Aid, into the mo er, into the alpaca. Now the purple will dye everything, the countertops, which is why we've got the towel down, my hands, which is why I have the gloves on. And now I'm gonna take the pattern pieces, bunny pieces, squeeze them out a little bit, and then put them in to the Kool-Aid mix. I'm gonna try to do it as soon as quickly as possible so they're as evenly dyed as possible. And then stir it. to help the, all the pieces get dyed evenly. Now we're gonna cover this with plastic wrap and we'll put it in the microwave for about two minutes. Okay, I've pulled the mohair out of, the, or the alpaca out of the microwave. We're gonna stir it up and see how it looks. Now, as remember when we're done with Kool-Aid, Kool-Aid only, it only binds to animal fibers. So it's not going to dye the cotton backing. Now, let's see here. Oh, that's still kind of pale. So I think I'm gonna microwave it a couple more minutes, get it a little darker color. Okay, our bunny pieces have had a second round in the microwave at two minutes. Let's take a look now. That's about what I was hoping to find. Nice. So now you want to get all of these pieces as fast as possible so that they're dyed about the same, evenly, all the same time, into the dish pan full of warm water to rinse them out. Next up, after we've rinsed our pieces really well, we're kind of mushing them around and squeezing them, and take all the pieces out, kind of squeeze them a little bit and lay them on paper towel. I'm gonna take another paper towel and lay it over the top and try to help squeeze out the extra water. Now before I set the pieces aside to dry, I'm gonna take a clean toothbrush. I use this just for my bears and I'm going to, you can use a slicker brush if your pieces are bigger, but these are small pieces, so I use a toothbrush. I'm gonna brush the fur in the correct direction so that it dries correctly. So the, when the fur dries, it's going in the right direction. So brush all your pieces and then just set your pieces aside to dry. Then we'll have our next step after that. After. Now our pieces are all dry. Now for the pieces that we cut them out before we dyed the fur, but we haven't sewn it yet. Some of the uh, sizing on the back of the fabric will have been removed. So you wanna check the edges and see if there's any fraying, particularly at the face. In some cases, it might be the gusset. This happens to be a four part head with no gusset. So I'm looking at the face here to make sure that nothing is raveling. This particular fabric, which was a, a, an alpaca, had a very tightly woven back. So it looks like I don't have any fraying to worry about. If I did, if there was some fraying, then I would use this uh, alcohol-based fray check and very carefully add just a little bit, just a touch, just to keep it from unraveling like this. And I would do that along the whole piece if there was any chance of um, a lot of fraying. And so that's it. That's how you can dye your fabrics with Kool-Aid in the microwave.